Hello, welcome to our Bible study tonight. We're continuing on our topic of uh, of healing. And this is going to be part two. Uh, I started out with the question, is divine healing for today? And more importantly, is it God's desire to heal me and to heal you today in our time? Uh, of course, you figured out, I believe it is God's will to heal you and I. We took our first scripture out of Third uh, John, verse 2. Beloved, I desire above all things that thou prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now we're going to go back to the Old Covenant. Now I'm going to read a passage to you out of Isaiah 53. Every theologian that I know, whether evangelical, spirit-filled, Catholic even, believe that this is the prophet is speaking of Jesus Christ on the cross, and this is referred to as the atonement. Now, what that word atonement means, for those of you who might not know, means it's what Christ atoned for. Atoned is a word we don't use a lot today, but it simply means this. Christ paid for something so that you and I would not have to pay that price. In other words, Jesus became our substitute, our sacrifice for something, so you and I wouldn't have to pay that penalty. One of the things we find out is Christ not only paid the price, the full price for our sins, by becoming a sacrifice, dying on that cross, to pay the full price, even to the point I believe his spirit even went and suffered the pains of hell, not because he sinned, but because you and I sinned. And he had to pay the full price. He had to pay the full price in his spirit, in his soul, and in his body. And his resurrection was a uh, complete resurrection, spirit, soul, and body. Look at it this way. His spirit paid the full price in hell. His soul paid the price in in the garden. Remember, it talks about he, his soul was made a sacrifice. That's his mind, will, and emotion. He suffered in the garden of Gethsemane so bad to the point that it said great drops of blood fell from his brow. Sweat was like blood. He was in agony. His soul, he died. His suke, that's what the word, Greek word for soul is, died in that garden for you and I. He said, Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, thy will, not my will, your suke, your will be done and not mine. He died to his own will and sacrificed himself for you and I to the Father. And of course, we understand he died physically upon the cross. But before he went to the cross, he went to the whipping post. You and I need to understand that. He went to that whipping post for one reason and one reason only, to pay the full price for sickness and disease. Christ atoned for sickness and disease even before going to the cross so that you and I would not have to suffer in this life the pains of sickness and disease. Sickness and disease is not going to be in heaven. Some people say, well, he's talking about spiritual sickness and disease. There's not going to be any spiritual sickness or disease in the next life, in heaven, in the new earth. It's not going to exist. There's no reason for him to make atonement for it there. It's not going to be there. No, he atoned for it so you and I wouldn't have to be sick and diseased in our bodies on this earth. So let me read you something out of Isaiah 53. I'm going to start at verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. When you get over to, uh, I think it's Second Peter 2.24, or First Peter 2.24, talks about who his own self bare our sins on the cross, uh, in our stead, but by whose stripes we are healed. Let's look at that real quick. I'm, I'm messing that up. Let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. I believe it is. If it's not, it's 2.24. We'll, we'll get that right here. Okay. 1 Peter. Yes, it's 1 Peter 2.24. It says, Who himself. Then this, of course, goes back to Isaiah 53. 
who himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now notice in Isaiah it was, you was, and now you were under the new covenant. It's a, it's a done thing. It's been taken care of. It was was because Jesus had not went to the cross yet in Isaiah 53, but now he has, we're under the new covenant, and we, it's been taken care of by whose stripes we were healed. But that word in Isaiah 53, griefs and sorrows, don't know why <clears throat> the King James translated, translated those words, griefs and sorrows. If you have a concordance, and if you're going to be a serious student, a Berean of the Word of God, you've got to get some good study tools. One of the things you must have is a concordance. If you can't get a concordance, they're, they're, they're $14, $15 at a good Bible bookstore, maybe 20 at the most. Get a Touch Bible app. Touch those words, grief and sorrow. I think you can download the Touch Bible onto your phone free, the King James Version, and you need that to look up this up. If you look those words up, if you hit griefs and sorrows, you're going to find out very quickly that one, the, the original word means sickness, for griefs, I believe it is, and for sorrows, it means diseases. And when you read the definition, it's talking about physical sickness and physical diseases. Again, there's no reason for Christ to die for spiritual sickness and disease. You're not going to suffer that in heaven. No, we have that right now, and he paid the full price for you and I so that we don't have to. Isn't that wonderful? Christ made atonement. For you and I, that we do not have to suffer sickness and disease. Let me say something very strongly here. It is an affront to Jesus Christ when we do not accept and take for ourselves, appropriate for ourselves, that which he died to give us. An example of this I heard a long time ago, and I've never forgotten, and I believe it was Brother Hagin used this analogy. He said a grandfather walks up and he has a handful of change, quarters, dimes, nickels, probably a dollar and fifty in change in his hand. He holds it out to his little grandchild. The grandchild looks at the money, looks up at the face of the grandfather, looks down at the money, looks up at the face of the grandfather, looks down at the money, looks up at the face of the grandfather, and grabs a nickel and runs off. Now, how much of that change did Grandpa want the little grandchild to have? If you're saying all of it, you're right. Wanted them to have all of it, but all they did was grab a nickel or half. And that's what we've done with the atonement. We've reached out there and we've grabbed salvation. We believe in salvation. We accept salvation. We accept that we're saved. We don't have to go to hell. We're going to go to heaven one day. And by the way, that word save, sozo, means a whole lot more than just going to heaven. Part of the connotation of that word is healing. But we have left the atonement of divine healing, many, at least half the church has, and, and not appropriated that. And let me tell you something, Christ paid a tremendous price. If you saw the movie that Mel Gibson did, uh, The Passion, which I believe was couldn't even portray as bad as that was, as good a portrayal as that was, it didn't, even, it could, didn't take into account probably a tenth of his actual suffering, the way he was mauled and beaten. And that was so you and I, would not have to suffer the ravages of sickness and disease. So I'm going to end that with that today. I hope this has blessed you. Meditate on it. Read it for yourself. Look up those words. And remember, there's 134 other scriptures dealing with divine healing, physical healing of sickness and disease in the scripture. Get that inside of you. And when the enemy comes with those symptoms, refuse them. We're going to get into, uh, this is going to be a long study. We're going to take our time, uh, doing eight, nine, ten minutes at a time. It's going to take a while. But we're going to dig into this because it's time for the body of Christ to walk in divine hell. God bless you. Bye-bye.